You applied to many UX openings. You hoped for the best, fingers crossed, but all you get is system rejection after rejection after rejection. You're not alone. That sucks. I understand because I was there. Look at my email. These are my rejections. I get rejections all the time. In fact, rejections are just part of the process. It's actually pretty normal. However, I have to point out these emails are not useful at all. Do you ever wonder, why did I get rejected? What's going on? What did I do wrong? It really doesn't say. All it has is a no, I'm breaking my little heart, destroy my confidence, and there's nothing else. This is happening to designers at all stages. Interns, new grads, junior designers, senior designers, staff designers. As somebody who worked in Silicon Valley for quite some time, someone who helped hire designers and interns, I have seen enough that I can say, I know what's going on, I know what is behind the scenes. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how do hiring processes and rejections work? And I'm gonna do that in three chapters. Number one, I will walk you through six reasons why you might get rejected. And two, I will explain why they are the way they are and how those are probably really not your fault. So don't stress about it. And lastly, I will offer my perspective of how to deal with those and ultimately have a better shot next time. If you're interested in that insider knowledge, well, grab your favorite drink and let's get into it, yo. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. There are quite a lot to get into today. So let's start with the first one, pre-vetted candidates. These are candidates that have been identified internally whether they are past interns, past candidates that the company already gave an offer to, or referrals, friends for friends, nepotism. Did I just say nepotism? What could be happening is that the company would need that person get into the system, go through the HR process again. So that they have a documentation, they have a log of this person had applied. So the company will use that HR tool, whether it's Greenhouse or Workday or any of other tools to create a post of product designer, product design intern, and then to ask that person to apply for it so that the process looks more formal, it looks official. Meaning they might not even see your application or portfolio. So that's not really your fault. There's nothing you can do to change the outcome. So if you like, maybe you can reach out to the hiring manager or the recruiter to get some clarity, especially if that's the role that you're really into, that you really want to learn more about. If not, spend more time making your portfolio better. Next, number two, they have hired the person already. And that is to say the recruiters are being late or lazy in closing out that designer post. Again, if that is the case, it's likely the hiring manager has not seen your application, your resume, your portfolio at all. So you can't really discredit yourself. They haven't seen any of your stuff yet. So not your fault, nothing really you can do. Same with the previous one. If you really want to know about it, reach out to them, get clarity. If not, work on your portfolio. Your time could be better spent on your portfolio rather than mulling over why they never got back to you. Number three, there will be certain filters applied. For example, if they are only looking for candidates who live in the US, so they might turn on the filter of location that search for candidate, the filter candidates out that are US only. And I have a real example. In 2017, when I was interning at Google, I spoke with the director of motion design, and he told me there are a few quite good applicants that they really liked, the team liked, he liked, but they couldn't get them hired because they're from Europe. And there are some legal slash immigration complication involved in that process. So they never got those amazing motion designers. And that's quite unfortunate. If that was you, I wouldn't say that's your fault either. If you plan to, if you want to really live in Denmark and apply to a company that only take US candidates, then it's really your decision. It's your trade off. And maybe huge warning sign, take it with a really, really light grain of salt. And don't quote me on it. If you really want to work in the US, but you're currently not in the country. However, you do plan to move to the US. And just to repeat, do not lie about moving. If you're actually moving, but you're not here yet, maybe it's okay to just say you are in the US. Again, don't quote me on it. Just an idea. Or even better, just move to the US first and then interview. Problem solved. It's just a matter of sequence of event, which one happens first. Another example is that you will need a sponsorship. H1B visa, for example. This is probably conspiracy theory. You can do more research. Some companies don't sponsor H1B visa for international candidates. 
to optimize their hiring process. They have that question in the application and they could filter you out because of that. Technically, what I know is that it's actually illegal to screen candidates out because of the immigration status. However, you don't have the proof and the rejection email does not say that. So you cannot really argue with them about it. Whether companies actually do this, I don't know. Just a theory of how people might get auto filtered out and get a rejection system email. Next, number four, level mismatching. If you're looking for designers with five or more years of experience, and you only have one or two or new grad, then it's probably a pass for them. They know that because when you fill out your current position duration, the system can calculate your years of experience and compare against their target. Sometimes they're actually looking for five plus years of experience, but they don't tell you that explicitly in the job post. I know this one is true. It's a fact because I've talked to the recruiters about it. Their rationale is if you put in a big number of years of experience, it might discourage good designers with fewer years of experience to apply. It's technically true. That's actually how I got my first job. I was a new grad and there's no new grad post open. So it's really a double-edged sword that you want transparency or you want efficiency. So in this case, not really your fault again. The only thing that you might be able to do is just keep learning, keep growing, gain experience ASAP to build up your experience, skills, levels, and credibility. Next, number five is probably a mistake or some sort. Something could go wrong in the process. It could happen and it happened to me. I got a system rejection email from Snapchat on January 19th. I was like, okay, it's fine. But on January 20th, the next day, the recruiter emailed me back and say, hey, let's move forward. And later on, I got an offer. I wouldn't say this is common, but it could happen. I assume the recruiter makes some mistake of clicking the wrong button in the HR tool. So if that happened to you, not your fault, but also congrats, you get an interview. And again, it's not common either. It only happened to me like once out of hundreds of applications. Last one, number six, under-trained screening. After your application gets into the company system, there are a few possibilities that it could happen. Number one, the recruiter will screen your resume or maybe portfolio, or the hiring manager will screen your resume and likely your portfolios. Or the hiring manager will screen only the portfolios. And that's the path that I took, that my team took, our company took. Problems can occur likely in the first scenario. Recruiters screening resumes and portfolio. But they're not well trained enough. Problem one, they might just naively check your education against the rubric, the job post. Oh, they saw your architecture major or economics or engineering and then they will just pass. Maybe you are a really brilliant self-taught UX designer. Who knows? They might not even know industrial design is related to UX, or they might not even know what industrial design is. And that would be a really dumb way of getting rejected. Or they just naively look at your past experiences and don't see any matching keywords like commerce, prototypes, business solutions, native mobile, they pass. Even though your current skills and experiences can totally be transferable to this new company or just they don't have the eye for screening portfolios. They don't know what's good or bad and they just pass randomly. That's so sad. And this is not your fault, so don't blame yourself. There's nothing you can do. Blame the recruiter in this case. My hope is that design recruiting will get better over time and I will try to do my best to educate recruiters that I work with, that I know, so that this problem could happen way less, way less often. And that is number six. So those are the six reasons that you could get rejected from a UX job application. They might be inefficient, dumb, nonsense, but it's not your fault. So don't get frustrated or discouraged. Keep iterating on your portfolio, put up a great project that can never be wrong and will only make you closer to success. In the next video, I plan to review four more reasons that you might get rejected, but at this time, you have total control to change the course. Those are something really critical and important to pay attention to and to get right, but you don't know them because again, the emails don't say anything. So make sure to subscribe, turn on the bell so you don't miss it when it comes out. I know I've been saying a lot about put up a better project, make your portfolio better, and I know it might sound broad or vague, but I actually do have very concrete and actionable things that you could work on today, tomorrow, this week on your portfolio. And I've used my best craft and design thinking to capture those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. 
like and subscribe to support this channel and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers.